Hey, Allison here from Learning at the Primary Pond. In this video, I'm going to explain how I group my students for literacy centers in a way that allows them opportunities to work with similar ability peers as well as um, different ability peers. Okay, so in order to explain how I like to make it work, I'm going to use some really round ideal numbers um, just to show you what it would look like in a perfect scenario. So over here I have these guided reading groups. Um, I have four of them and there are six kids in each group. And the red group is the lowest and the green group is the highest. So they're ranked from lowest to highest. Um, and so what I want to create is I want to take these same kiddos, 24 in my class, and make six different groups that will go to centers together. And I have a couple of things to think about. First of all, when I do centers, I like to have kids work in partnerships. So even if there's like, you know, four kids in a centers group, um, which is going to be the case in this scenario, I still like to have them work with partners because I just feel like it's easier for them to get along and also it reduces the noise level. So I want to have kids in groups where they can work in partners. I also want them to have an option of working with a partner who is about the same ability as them because that makes things like playing word study games easier. But I also want them to have opportunities to work with someone who is um, you know, a little bit higher or a little bit lower with that, a bit, little bit lower than them so that they can learn from each other. And the last consideration I have to think about is the fact that because kids are not going to centers with their same guided reading groups, when I pull for a guided reading group, I need to not mess up the activity. So for example, if um, I pull a group and there's only one child left and if it's a partner activity, then I've messed up that activity. So I need to make sure that when I pull a group, even though the groups may change and I can, you know, adjust these as necessary. I need to make sure that generally speaking, when I pull a group, it's not going to, um, you know, ruin the activity that I have planned. All right, so the first group I'm going to make is a group of two kiddos from the red group and then two kiddos from the yellow group. And the reason why I'm not pulling from the orange group or the green group is because I want to create a gap in ability that is significant but not too significant. So now we have this group where you know two kids can work together when I want them to work you know for example studying words and these guys can work together when it's an activity that works best with same or similar ability pairings but at the same time when they go to a center if it's the partner reading center then I might have them work in mixed ability partnerships by just telling them, okay, I want you to work from someone who is not in your guided reading group. So that gives me lots of options. The other nice thing is that if I pull either the red group or the yellow group for guided reading, that won't affect the activity because I'll still have two kids that are left there and can work together. So I'm going to actually create two more of these same or um, very similar groups. So each one of these circles represents a kiddo. I can't remember if I said that or not. And then I'm basically going to do the same thing for the orange and green group. Again, I'm creating a gap that's significant when I want them to work in, um, you know, mixed ability pairings, but not too significant because I don't want kids to be working together who are, you know, so much higher or so much lower than each other that they really can't learn from each other or teach each other well. Oops. Okay, so that got messed up. We're just going to clone this little kiddo. So now what we have are we have six different centers groups. 
there's four kids in each group. They can work with partners who are about the same ability or a different ability than them. And when I pull a guided reading group, it's not going to affect the activity because most of my activities require only two kids. So that's what this would look like in an ideal scenario. This is kind of what we want to aim for. Okay, so now let's look at a scenario where the groups are not as round, not as even, everything's not as neat. And I'll just walk you through my thinking um, of what I would do in this situation. So let's say that we have five guided reading groups instead of four. And then we still want to put our kids into six different centers groups. And we still want all of that stuff to be true where we can you know, have kids work, work in mixed ability or similar ability partners. And we also want to be able to pull for guided reading without, you know, disrupting centers activities. So again, we're going to try to create a difference between abilities um, within the groups that's significant, but not too significant. So let's just start with some red yellow groups. All right, looks like we can do another one. And then we have that yellow one left over. Let's hold off on that one. If we do green-orange pairings, which would be good for um, the ability difference, then what happens is that we have these two little orange and yellow guys and then we have um, the highest group, which is blue, and we have them potentially being, being all in one group, which we don't really want. So what we can do is we can do just a little bit of swapping. Um, we can do an orange and blue group because that's... Actually, you know what? Let's do a yellow and blue group to kind of minimize the difference. Let's do that. And then let's do that. So right now I'm liking the gap between each of the groups. So, you know, yellow to blue isn't too big. Orange to green isn't too big. Basically, we just don't want a red to blue gap because that's too much of a gap. So we've avoided that. However, we still have these little orange and yellow guys and we can do a couple of things. We could just add one on here and add one on here, but my preference is actually just to make a group of six. So what I would do is I would ask myself, okay, what group can I add these onto so that we still have a good mix of ability partnerships so they can work with similar ability peers and, you know, different ability peers. Well, yellow and orange aren't that different um, because in my little ranking I had red, orange, yellow. So they're technically those groups should only be about a level apart or so. So they could be paired together. And then let's see where they could go so that they could also learn from their peers. I kind of like them in here. So that way the yellow guys can learn from the blue guys. Um, the orange guy can learn from the yellow or blue guys. And everything is more or less even. So that's kind of how I would handle a situation where we don't have an even number of groups and we have to do an extra group of six. Um, obviously your situation will kind of depend on your numbers, but if you use sticky notes or play around with an app like Explain Everything, that's what I'm using to create this, then hopefully you can work out something that will meet all of your needs and also put the kids in groups that will work well.